Hey everyone, so welcome to this new video. This is the second video for this kind of series, I guess, that I'm making on how to make smart materials, stylized smart materials. The first one was on how to make wood. In this one, we're gonna see how to make stylized metal smart material in Simpsons Painter. So let's get into it. Here in Simpsons Painter, I already have the folders, uh, the same folders that I created for the wood. That's usually something that I do at the beginning, any kind of smart material, because this is the basic stuff. It's pretty normal for me to add this for any kind of smart material. So it's always good to keep those in mind to guide me through when I'm doing the material. Okay, so you start by adding a fill layer to your base folder. Come to your base color and add a bluish and somewhat dark color. Bring your metallic all the way up to 9 or something and play around with, with your roughness to me somewhat around the, the middle. Awesome. So you can see that your metallic and your roughness, it already gives you a lot of what you need. So it already kind of looks similar to a metal. And since it's not too much metallic and not too much glossiness, it already kind of looks like some stylized metal. Okay, so for metal, the thing is that most of the smart material is made of variation more than the base, different from how the wood looks like. Let's work a little bit more on the base, but most of the work is going to be on the variation. Okay, so something we can already add in here is I'm going to duplicate the base and isolate your base color. As Subtraction to your color and make it darker. It could be also good to change a little bit your hue. Add a black mask and add a gradient generator. Play around with the opacity. Duplicate your layer again, but now make it a little bit greenish and brighter. And change the generator to curvature. Play around with the parameters until you're satisfied. And we can change this to something more orange and decrease the opacity. You can activate your metal and your roughness. And what I like to do is make it a little bit more rough and a little bit less metallic. I'm going to duplicate this and instead of adding a curvature, I'm going to add a metal edge wear on here. This is going to add a lot of noiseness, which I don't like that much. So for me, it's good to add this kind of stuff for duration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fill on top of this and I'm going to add a pearly noise in here. And with this, I'm going to multiply my metal edge wear. So it's going to decrease the amount of edge wear that I have. So now it's only a little bit of variation in some places, so it's a, it's a little bit better. Let's keep this very nice, so let's rename all of our layers. Okay, so let's start adding some variation, and if we need, we can go back into our base on other moment. Okay, so on variation, I'm gonna start by adding some color variation. So for me, I usually already have rainbow textures in here, and I just like, I have this smart material, just because I use that a lot, that is just a drag and drop. I have to change this to pass through, and what this makes, let me change this to normal just so you can see. I have this rainbow in here, in the base color, and I have a triplanar projection in here. This way I can add coloration very easily to any texture at all. So yeah, I recommend you doing something like this because it's super easy to add coloration this way. So we already have some colorations. I'm going to add some value variations also. So add a fill layer and isolate the base color, make it a little bit darker and change this to multiply. Add a black mask and add a fill to it. Come to your grayscale and type grunge and look for a texture that will work for some kind of noise coloration. I feel like that might work. So add a filter and add a blur slope. Yeah, this should work. I'm going to duplicate this and make it a, a second layer of coloration. This, I'm going to change this to the projection. I'm going to rotate a little bit and make it more contrasted. And I'm going to change this to add instead of multiply. Now I have some brighter spots also. Let's duplicate this multiply collaboration again on top of the other collaboration. And let's add some spots now. So the list is blur slope and change this grunge to grunge spots. And we should have a couple options in here. Probably this grunge shavings or grunge spots, they are the best options. Okay, so I'll go with this grunge shavings. And I'm going to add that blur slope again because I feel like this is a little bit too straight to me. Okay, so I like the spots like this. So I'm going to duplicate these spots and I'm going to make a second version for this a little bit bigger. I'm just going to change the type in here. Okay, now duplicate the spots in here and let's add some cuts in them and slashes through the textures. Delete the blur slope, increase the opacity, and let's look for a texture for this. Okay, so now duplicate the spots and let's add some scratches. Delete the blur slope and add the opacity all the way up and let's look for grunge scratch. And this is the best thing about Substance Painter when you're doing this kind of smart material. Sometimes it, we need to do these textures from scratch by hand, but usually it's always good to check if you don't have this texture you need already in the library because we do have a lot of options in here so remember to just check every time you're going to do a texture from scratch if you don't already have this in here so i'll go with this one okay i feel like this is a little bit too noisy so i'm going to see if maybe this one is better yeah i feel like this one is gonna work better i'm going to add the metal and the roughness in here just so i can decrease the amount of metal and roughness Awesome, we're already getting close to finished. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to go and start the adjustments folder and add a fill layer. Change this to multiply. Make sure your adjustments folder is set to pass through. Isolate your base color, add a black mask and add an image occlusion generator. So we add a first layer. I'm going to add a second one in here. This first one is a little bit more contrasted and I want to add one that more blur.
Okay, it's awesome. So now we can start adding some adjustments to what we did. Something I'm going to do is I'm going to add this, both of these image occlusions to a folder called AL. I'm going to set this to pass through. Now we have some more control over the opacity of both of them at the same time. That might be useful. So another thing I think we're going to have to decrease the opacity a little bit is this rainbow variation. It's a little bit too strong. I'm going to change this to 50. Oh, so this one in here, I feel like the saturation is a little bit too high. Now we already have some nice results in here. I'm going to make sure that we add the contrast filter in here and the HSL just so we have some more control in the adjustments layer so i can change the hue or the amount of contrast and brightness of our model this kind of looks cool something i usually do also in the variation tab but this is very personal honestly that's not something you might find uh, very useful a lot of times it's adding a kind of a paint a layer in here so what we would do is a little different folder in here and we can add a black mask in here and add a generator for curvature Try to do something around the curvatures and invert this. So now we can, you can change your color so, so you can make some kind of a faint layer on top of your model. So if I would actually go through and make this, I would make sure that inside this folder, I already have like smart material for this paint layer also. But no, I'm not gonna go through all of this now. So just good for you to keep in mind in case you want to do something like this. So yeah, I guess we have our metal texture done. Okay, now so make your smart material folder, name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it metal. Bring all of them into your metal. Change this to pass through just to make sure. And now right click your metal folder and create smart material. So now you have your new smart material inside your library. Let's export this and see how it looks inside Unreal. Thank you everyone for seeing this video. If you liked the result, please let me know in the comments and leave a like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.